I, I don't see in the industry taking as wild a swings as it, as it used to. Largely, be two reasons. One, industry is maturing in general, so that's one. But second, just in general, supply chains in this industry are much more efficient than they were. I mean, largely driven by the building the internet to a large degree in communications across supply chains. So I think that the wild swings of speculation and capacity, uh, that, that, that has settled down a significant amount. Uh, our customers are more efficient at dealing with that and user all the way through the entire process. So I don't see that so much. Clearly, you know, this is an industry that's grown up and is now probably beyond its teenage years and into its, you know, and it's into its mature years. And, you know, having any industry that's only grown 5 to 7% versus how it used to grow at 15% is, is, is a tough challenge for all of us. And costs are not coming, costs are going up and consumer expectations are, are coming down. I, I had somebody tell me they bought a 32-inch flat screen TV and a DVD player um, for $484 the other day. I just, it's shocking. <laughs> I mean, it's tough, right? That's a tough space to be in as an industry. Um, and so there will be more consolidations from a, from a raw technology standpoint. And, and unfortunately, I think innovation is suffering in the short term because of that. So if industry is not necessarily going through these swings, but individual suppliers yeah. or folks may be going through huge swings right. because the size of the contracts right now, or if you can say the, the volume is higher. So uh, a company may come and they get a contract, they're really up, or you know, next day, you know, they don't get another one, it's really down. So, but as an industry as a whole, where all these are feeding, that's going to be stable. We're looking at the at, at an industry, a mature industry that's serving the very affluent portion of the global economy, and we're also seeing certain areas in the global economy that are really accelerating in terms of growth and potential demand. And so, I'm not so sure that that I believe that those elements of potential growth have been integrated into our current view. Right, as a small percentage, for example, in China, China, China grows a lot. It doesn't show up in the macro sense because it's still a relatively small portion. But the rate of growth of demand and potential consumption in there will, for some period, I believe, and not infinitely far into the future, actually give us an opportunity for better growth. The question is, will will we be able to capture that growth? Who's going to be a player and in a position to actually? take advantage of the opportunity that that market uh, actually provides. So I think that there's still some organic market opportunity based just on the fact that uh, you know there are many growing economies in the world to potentially draw from. The second thing is the interesting point that we've, we've you know, we crossed uh, a couple of years ago the, the you know, the industries, um, you know, economics, which were being driven to a large extent by uh, computing and computing infrastructure into consumerization. And, and that particular change, I think that, you know, people are out there now looking at the what's the 10 billion unit per year thing that's coming next. And, and there's a lot of interesting ideas floating around there. I think in the biosciences areas, applications of some of the things we're seeing, which are disposable point of care, whether it's diagnostics or, or uh, medicinal control elements associated with that. And so those are also, I think, variables that could change the you know the fundamental landscape of what we see in the industry as we go forward. So we'll keep a watch out. I mean, you know, you're right. If 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 nothing changed from what we see today in terms of either the market that we're serving or the technology we're serving, not so interesting. But I'm I'm the eternal optimist, and I think that there are some really really interesting technological thresholds that we we we've, we've crossed, and we, we you know we we have the patience to invest wisely that uh, some new market opportunities are very likely to, to show up in interesting places over the next five or so years.